This is the last passage in the reading section. Let's read the blurb. This passage is adapted from Dawn Levy, ORNL researchers invent tougher plastic with 50% renewable content, published in 2016 by Oak Ridge National Laboratory. All right, so let's read the first paragraph. It says, a car's bumper is usually made of moldable thermoplastic polymer called ABS, shorthand for blah, blah, blah. And then they talk about where it's used. One point that they do make is in line seven. Useful as it is, one of its drawbacks is that it is made using chemicals derived from petroleum. So I guess that's bad. Now in the second paragraph, they're gonna talk about this new material that they made. It says researchers at the Department of Energy Oak Ridge National Laboratory have made a better thermoplastic by replacing styrene with lignin. That was one of the ingredients for the old thermoplastic. And it's described as a brittle, rigid polymer that with cellulose forms the woody cell wall of plants. What's good about this, line 14, they say it's solvent free and it produces a meltable, moldable ductile material that's at least 10 times tougher than ABS. So the new one is ABL, the old one is ABS. The resulting thermoplastic called ABL, and it's the same abbreviation, and they say it's also recyclable. Since they replaced one of the materials with lignin, now they're gonna talk more about lignin. It says, this technology could make use of the lignin-rich biomass byproduct stream from biorefineries and pulp and paper mills. So basically they're saying these industries probably have lignin as a byproduct in their own processes. With the prices of natural gas and oil dropping, renewable fuels can't compete with fossil fuels. So biorefineries are exploring options for developing other economically viable products. Usually renewable fuels are a lot more expensive than fossil fuels. And so that's why they're proposing this idea of using the lignin stuff because it is sort of a, a byproduct of these other industries. And they do say lignin is the most commercially underutilized material. In the next paragraph, they're gonna to continue to describe lignin. So it says lignin is a very brittle natural polymer. Brittle means it breaks easily, so it needs to be toughened. And that was explained by Amit Nascar. And then they talk about one goal is to have this balance between polymers that are strong and tough enough to be deformed without fracturing. And the way that they do that, it says they chemically combine soft matter with lignin. So they're going to talk about that process as we go further. The next paragraph, they say all lignins are not equal in terms of heat stability. And then they have to decide which one, you know, what's the best material to combine with lignin. And it says the scientists evaluated lignin from wheat straw, softwoods like pine and hardwoods like oak. They found hardwood lignin is the most thermally stable. So that's going to be the best one. And some types of softwood lignins are also melt stable. Now we're going to talk about how they actually combine it. It says the researchers needed to couple the lignin with soft matter. Chemists typically accomplish this by synthesizing polymers in the presence of solvents. One advantage of the process that they use, this was NASCAR and Chow Tran, is that they try to couple the tool in a melted phase without the use of solvents, which presumably is better uh, for the environment. So the last paragraph talks in detail about how they combine the two materials. And the result is line 69. Without the proper selection of a soft matrix and mixing conditions, lignin agglomerates are at least 10 times larger than those obtained with the ORNL process. So it looks like they were able to achieve something that was a lot smaller, which I guess is also a lot better. It says the product that formed had properties of neither lignin nor rubber, but something in between with a combination of lignin stiffness and nitrile rubber's elasticity. So it sounds like the result that they got was generally good and that's what they were going for. A lot of technical details in this passage. Let's just go back and very quickly annotate as best we can. So first paragraph is talking about ABS. That was the traditional material. And then it's talking about one of the disadvantages. The second paragraph is talking about the replacement to ABS and that's ABL. And from this point on, we're going to be talking mostly about lignin. Here, the discussion is in relation to how it's used commercially. The next paragraph is talking about lignin, specifically the properties of lignin. This paragraph over here talks about lignin in relation to heat stability. Again, we're just annotating in case one of the questions is going to ask about this so we know where to look. The next paragraph talks about how they actually combine lignin with the other materials. And the last paragraph talks about what the results are, what they have created in effect. Question 42, 
The author most likely mentions several commonplace objects in the first paragraph in order to. So let's look at it. First paragraph is where they introduce ABS. It says a car's bumper is usually made of it. And it's also the stuff of ventilation pipes, protective headgear, kitchen appliances, Lego bricks, and many other consumer products. Then it says useful as it is. Why are they mentioning all this? Because they're saying it's useful. It's in, it's in a lot of products. Choice A, give a sense of the range of uses to which ABS can be put. Yes, definitely. Choice B, indicate the plentiful supply of ABS has led to its devaluation. Nothing at all mentioned about the supply of ABS. Also nothing about its devaluation. They do talk about one disadvantage though. Choice C, provide examples of potential alternatives to ABS. Those are the things that are made of ABS, so they're not alternatives to ABS. Choice D, suggest that environmental concerns will curtail reliance on ABS in manufacturing. Whether or not that's true remains to be seen, but that's not why they list all that stuff. They list all that stuff just to show how widespread and how useful it is. So choice D is out, and the best answer is A. Question 43, as used in line 12, forms most nearly means. So let's take a look at it. Let's start from line nine. Researchers at the ORNL have made a better thermoplastic by replacing styrene with ligand, a brittle, rigid polymer that, with cellulose, forms the cell walls of plants. That's the sentence we want to keep in mind. So what's another word for forms? Lignin, you can say, makes up. In other words, the idea is that it's a part of it. So lignin makes up the woody cell walls of plants. But does lignin organize the cell wall of plants? Definitely not. Does lignin compose the cell wall of plants? That's definitely a possibility because compose in this case would mean to like constitute or make up. Choice C, does lignin conceive the cell wall of plants? Doesn't make sense. Con conceive is to sort of like form, like you, can see, you conceive of an idea or you conceive of a plan in your mind, meaning to make it. Choice D, does lignin acquire the cell wall of plants? Acquire means to get or to obtain, so also doesn't make sense. So the best choice is B, compose. Question 44, one function of the third paragraph is to, so let's look at what the third paragraph says. And this is the paragraph that we said is talking about lignin and particularly its uses. It says the technology could make use of the lignin rich biomass byproduct so the point here was that because renewable fuels tend to be more expensive than uh, fossil fuels, that using lignin, which is a byproduct from these other industries, might be a good option in making economically viable products. And they're also saying lignin is commercially underutilized. And then here it focuses a little bit more on the study. It says the study aimed to use it to produce with an eye toward commercialization a renewable thermoplastic with properties rivaling those of current petroleum derived alternatives. So really the whole paragraph is talking about the economic impact and it's talking about uh, one of the goals is to create a renewable thermoplastic that has commercial utility and can sort of replace other renewable fuels. Choice A, describe the methods used by NASCAR's team in its research. So nothing about methods used in research, totally off. Choice B, suggest a rationale for the research conducted by NASCAR's team. So rationale is the reasoning. This one could work because, you know, obviously the rationale is to make something that's commercially useful and not as expensive as other renewable fuels. Choice C, describe the scientific phenomenon that NASCAR's team attempted to explain. So really no scientific phenomenon going on in that passage other than the fact that um, lignin makes up the cell walls of plants. Choice D, discuss the practical benefits that have resulted from the work of NASCAR's team. I think this is kind of a little off in terms of time. If they want to talk about practical benefits that may result in the future from their work, that could work, but it hasn't happened really yet. So choice D is out and B is going to be our answer. So questions 45 and 46 need to be done together. So let's read 45 real quick. The author suggests that a decrease in the cost of fossil fuels has led to, so remember what they were saying in that paragraph that we just read, because fossil fuels are cheaper, renewable fuels are not as popular anymore. But let's see if we can eliminate some choices. The near exhaustion of some fossil fuel reserves, probably not because they don't really talk about how much fossil fuels we have left. B, unsustainable energy consumption patterns. That may be true, 
but again, it doesn't seem to be a concern um, by the author. I don't really think he mentions it anywhere. Choice C, it's led to a repudiation of renewable energy initiatives. So repudiation is kind of like denial or rejection. It certainly doesn't go that far. He doesn't talk anything about that. Choice D, it's led to a drop in demand for alternative fuel sources. So this one seems to be the most likely. Let's go to question 46 and then see what the best answers are. Which choice provides the best evidence for the answer to the previous question? Keep in mind, we're looking for something that suggests that there has been a drop in demand for alternative fuel sources. Choice A, line 24 to 26. Line 24 says the technology could make use of the lignin-rich biomass product stream from biorefineries and pulp and paper mills. Nothing here about a reduced demand for alternative fuels, so A is out. Choice B, 26 to 29. Notice how all the sentences just follow, so let's just read them one after another. 26, it says, with the prices of natural gas and oil dropping, renewable fuels can compete with fossil fuels, so biorefineries are exploring options for developing other commercially viable products. So when it says renewable fuels can't compete, that could suggest that there's been a decrease in demand for them. Choice C is gonna say, Amongst cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin, the major structural constituents of plants, lignin is the most commercially underutilized. The fact that it's uh, the most commercially underutilized doesn't really suggest that the demand for alternative sources have been decreased, so not as good as sentence 26. And then choice D is the next sentence. The ORNL study aimed to use it to produce with an eye toward commercialization renewable thermoplastic with properties rivaling those of current petroleum-derived alternatives. So they do mention um, renewable thermoplastic, but it doesn't really suggest anything about a drop in demand. The closest one we're gonna get is in line 26, where it says renewable fuels cannot compete because of the price. So that would definitely result in a drop in demand. And the best answer is gonna be B for that one. Question 47, information in the passage best supports which statement about lignin? So what can we say about lignin? That's a very general question, and this needs to be done together with question 48. So let's go through each choice, see if we can eliminate any. Choice A, it's too expensive to use as an industrial polymer without being diluted with more common polymers. So number one, I don't think it's too expensive. They never really said that. And number two, the dilution process or the diluting process doesn't actually make it more cheap. So A is definitely out on two counts. Choice B, it's one of the few polymers that can be processed without the use of high heat. That doesn't make sense because remember there was that paragraph that we annotated about how heat resistant they were. Choice C, when combined with soft matter, it yields a polymer more stretchable than the original soft matter. I'm not really 100% sure about that. We'll keep it around just in case. Choice D, in its unaltered state, it breaks too easily to be used in high-performance thermoplastics. D seems right because I do remember reading something about it being brittle and that's why they needed to combine it with another material. Either way, we'll, we'll keep C in mind that it's more stretchable than the original soft matter or that it breaks too easily. So let's look at the answer choices. Which choice best provides evidence for answer to the previous question? Choice A is lines 37 to 40. Let's see what it says. 37, lignin is a very brittle natural polymer, so it needs to be toughened, explained study author Ahmet Nascar, leader of ORNLs, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, this does seem to back up choice D. Let's go back. Now there's choice D says it breaks too easily to be used in high performance thermoplastics. That definitely seems to go along. So A with choice D, we'll keep that in mind. Let's check choice B, 42 to 43. It says, we need to chemically combine soft matter with lignin. Nothing in this sentence itself about lignin either being more stretchable, the new material when combined, or about lignin breaking too easily. So choice B is going to be out. Choice C, 45 to 46. Very rigid lignin segments would offer resistance to deformation and thus provide stiffness. So again, this is talking about the drawback of using lignin by itself and why it needs to be combined with something doesn't say anything about the resulting product going to be more stretchy or stretchable than the old one. So choice C is out. Choice D, line 47. All lignans are not equal in terms of heat stability. So that doesn't back up either choice C or choice D. And it also contradicts choice B in 47. So D is out and our best choice is A for 48 and D for 47.
Question 49. According to the passage, NASCAR's team used nitrile rubber in the study because... Now, if you remember, nitrile rubber was mentioned um, as the material that they used to combine with the lignin. So let's start on line 57. Because lignin and synthetic rubber containing blah, 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 called nitrile rubber, both have chemical groups in which electrons are unequally distributed and therefore likely to interact. NASCAR and Chow Tran, who performed melt mixing and characterization experiments, instead tried to couple the two in a melted phase without solvents. It seems like the advantage of using nitrile rubber, this material, was one, they're going to interact well, and two, they could combine them without using solvents. A. Nitrile rubber is stiffer and more thermally stable than many other types of soft matter. It doesn't say that at all, so not going to work. B. The chemical composition of nitrile rubber suggested it would combine with lignin without the use of solvents. Yes, definitely. That's what we just read. Choice C. Sheets of nitrile rubber are only 10 to 200 nanometers thick and thus interpenetrate well with lignin in a melted phase. When they mentioned that the sheets are only 10 to 200 nanometers thick, I don't think they said that about the nitrile rubber. I think they said that about the finished product, but we can double check. 66. During mixing, lignin agglomerates broke into interpenetrating layers or sheets of 10 to 200 nanometers that dispersed well with, within and interacted with the rubber. So clearly we're talking about the lignin, not the rubber. Choice C is going to be out. D. Molecules of nitrile rubber and lignin have different numbers of electrons. That's probably true, but that's not the reason why they used it. Let's double check that line about electrons. It says both have chemical groups in which electrons are unequally distributed and therefore likely to interact. It's more about the distribution of the electrons and not the different number of electrons, although it might be true that they have a different number of electrons. D, still not as good a choice of B, and we'll stay with that one. Question 50, as used in line 73, properties most nearly means. It says the product that formed had properties of neither lignin nor rubber, but something in between. So what do they mean by the use of properties? They're obviously talking about the material itself. So I would guess characteristics or traits. And we need a word that means something similar to that. So keep in mind the sentence is saying the product itself had certain properties. Did it have possessions? No, that would be like houses and stuff. That's not what they mean by property here. Did the product have compositions? This word is kind of off. Composition does have to do with like the ingredients of something or the makeup of something. That's really talking about sort of like the constituent parts, like what properties or what things make up that material. So B, not likely going to be the answer. C, what qualities? Yeah, so qualities is probably the closest to the words that we guessed, which were characteristics or traits. Then choice D, to say that the product form had objects, neither like lignin, also doesn't make any sense. So the best choice is C. Question 51, according to the graph, all right, I'm not even gonna read it. Now should be the first time that you're actually looking at the graph, so let's do that. So what's the title? It says tensile strength, which means maximum stress at break-in, and maximum stretch before breaking by source of lignin in thermoplastic polymer. Remember, you know, in the passage they mentioned that you can get lignin from any of these types of wood. So on the left, we have tensile strength, and that concerns all the black bars of each material. On the right, we have maximum stretch before breaking, and that is measured by all the gray bars in each of them. Obviously, there is a lot of variation. Some have high tensile strength and low max strength, and some have the opposite. So let's see what the questions say. 51, which source of lignin resulted in thermoplastic polymer with the greatest tensile strength? So that's pretty easy. Let's just look for it. Tensile strength is in the black, so which one has the greatest, which is basically the highest black bar, and that's softwood type 1. So the answer is C. Question 52, according to the graph, the maximum stretch before breaking of a thermoplastic polymer produced from softwood type 2 is closest to, and all the answers are in terms of percent increase. You may initially be thinking that you'll have to do some calculations, but if you read the graph carefully, notice that the maximum stretch as they present it is already in terms of a percent increase. So really, this is just locate the measurement on the graph. Given that they are asking for the maximum stretch for softwood type two in percent increase, that's gonna be right here, and it's the gray bar, so that's closest to 500%, which means that choice C is the answer, and this is actually a very easy question, easier than it appears.